trying to catch my breath so I can give you guys an update on the K30 Burb. Well, it's been a productive couple of weeks, so today we're going to get into a bunch of stuff. I finished the rear axle, I put the engine in, I pulled it out, I pulled the body off, I plated the frame, and more! So today on Merrick's Garage, we're going into all that. Stay tuned! I just decided it was going to be easier if I was to pull the body off. I could get more access to the frame, to the engine mounts, to the trans tunnel, and kind of see where my interferences were coming from. And, and quite honestly, what I want to do is I want the engine to be perfect. I want the engine in the position that is best for the engine, and everything else can work around that. Uh, so hopefully my body mounts aren't going to be way off. I'm gonna lower it down again in a second here so we can see how it lines up. But this is where I am spotting the engine at this point. So we're looking level and let's go off the, I don't know if these are totally level or what, but let's go off there. I mean, that that's pretty good. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, decent clearances. Yeah. So uh, let's lower the, the body back down and see how things look. But my, mat, my plan of action right now is once I'm happy with where these are and once I've broken my handy dandy digital angle finder, I can start fixing everything in. So the engine will get pulled here in a second and everything will start getting burned in. Whew. Progress. Oh, let me show you one other thing. I'm pretty sure that my end, my frame is level. They're at 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and 3.4. Sorry about the finger. Yeah. When it comes to doing a come and swap, one of the most hotly debated areas is how much of the frame do you need to box? Or do you need to box it at all? And uh, I'm going to add my two cents into this conversation for what it's worth. There, the Suburbans came in two different varieties. You had a half ton, you had a three quarter ton. The three quarter ton had thicker rails. Now that's not to say the half ton is inadequate. Um, I think it's plenty. In fact, I, I don't really think you need to box these frames. Yes, they do move a lot. And that can be problematic with a hard, rigid body like the Suburban on here. But I also don't plan on twisting this thing up like I do the Blazer. Um, I want it to be a capable four-wheel drive. I want it to be uh, able to get where it needs to go. Uh, and that might require some gnarly wheeling occasionally. I don't see the true need to box the entire frame front to rear. So what I am doing is uh, doing selective boxing, plating, and reinforcing. I have the dueling, Adam Dueling is, uh, He's a guy over on CK5 that I have known for years through the forums, and uh, he's doing some really cool work, and he provided me with these frame plates. These are plates that will be welded onto the frame to provide just some lateral rigidity. Um, they come in either this plate version or a windowed version that requires a lot more welding and I probably would make look horrible. So I just got the regular non-windowed version. I'm gonna work my way forward. I've got the first one in place where I want it. I've cleaned everything in the back. Uh, so I've got bare metal to, to do my rosette welds on. So I'm gonna burn these in today and start running beads along here. I'm probably gonna be doing some cutting and working to get the plates on the inside shaped, but I also might be doing some vertical pieces uh, running perpendicular. So instead of, this is my C channel, instead of plating and turning it into a box, I may just be putting a vertical band uh, or rib between the upper and lower rails to just tie it all in and, and provide a little bit more rigidity. Uh, I don't think boxing is necessary completely, uh, but strategic placements along close to some of the motor mounts and the transmission mounts and 
that can help uh, substantially. So let's uh, finish getting all this prepped and hopefully today I'll be able to get this side done. Doesn't look like much because I completely fill welded and then ground it. So this is a nice thick flat flame flame frame rail, nice thick flat frame rail for me to mount everything on. So this is gonna be where the brake boss comes out, shock mount, there'll be a bump stop around here probably. A bunch of other stuff, I'm sure. So one side down. I made a lot of mess today. But every day it's a little bit closer. Welding up the plates on the driver's side today and I'm gonna be addressing the steering box. So let's show you, this is the ORD steering box reinforcement plate. And then you've got, you've got this piece that goes in underneath. Why, why do we need this? Well, let me show you. This, I'm trying to. Wow. Let's start over here. I am gonna be boxing and reinforcing the frame today up front on the driver's side focusing on this steering box. Now you can see my steering box is in good shape. There is no cracks, but that is not always the case. This is one of the first things I check on a square body because you will often find cracks along here between the bolts or cracks starting right there. It has to do with the fact that there's a lot of leverage placed by the pitman arm down here on this part of the box. So reinforcing it, strengthening it is a really good thing. I just need to get the steel all prepped and get this side welded in. Frame rails are prepped, meaning I just bring them down to bare steel because you cannot weld through paint and expect it to look any good at all. And this also gives me a, a really good opportunity to visualize and make sure there is no cracks on the frame when it's down at bare. So let's get the box back in place or the plate back in place and burn in this first plate. With a few seconds to kill while I am speed welding on these plates, I wanted to remind you guys that if you are not subscribed to click that subscribe button, smash that like button, leave me a comment, go hit that bell, and all the other myriad things that YouTube wants you to do. So if you feel like doing it, awesome. If you don't, no worries. If you're feeling really generous, go check out Patreon. Patreon.com slash Merrick's Garage. Throw a couple bucks my way. Help me continue to keep the lights on and making these killer videos. I think that's everything. Let's get back to melting metal. It's amazing what the right tools can do. I'm honestly about, I would guess, probably two months ahead of schedule as to what I had in my mind as to how long this was going to take me. And a, a lot of it is because I have an enclosed place that I don't have to clean up every day. And I've got a lift that I can get the truck up out of the way. And I've got a forklift from next door. So the right tools make a huge difference. And I'm very grateful. So where does that leave me? What do I still need to do? Well, I break it down into several areas. I've got the body. I've got the frame. I've got the powertrain. I've got the axles. So I work on all five of those or four of those uh, at some point during the week, I try and touch every one of those. So right now the frame is getting worked on and getting finished and with all the boxing and, and various strengthening. The body is getting hit with a wire wheel underneath to remove all the crap and grime and dirt and whatever from the last 30 years. That's gonna get hit with some lizard skin, uh, heat and sound deadener and top coat to try and take away some of the noise and uh, uh, harshness and, and vibration that might get transferred up to the body. Uh, I've also been hard at work on the axles. I got the axles mostly back together. Well, the, the rear is mostly back together. It needs a little bit of things, but uh, not much else. So let's take a look at this rear end. It is massive and uh, I got it done. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm not very confident on gears. That's an area I need more work on, but uh, they're in. And they look good. The AAM rear axle did not need much, but it did need a locker. So I pulled the old carrier out with the ring gear attached and I swapped in a Detroit. 
What that entails is basically removing the ring gear from the old carrier, installing it on the new carrier and dropping it back in. You have to keep in mind that you want to maintain appropriate preload on the carrier, meaning how tight are the bearings. I did that by measuring how many turns of the carrier bearing adjusters I needed to make. And then when I put the new carrier in, I matched the rotations so it was just as tight as it was before, checked my backlash, drew a pattern, and looked pretty good. Despite how massive and strong and heavy duty a rear differential, particularly a truck differential is, it is critically important that you maintain tolerances down to the thousandths. So when you install a ring gear on a carrier, it is a good idea to smooth the carrier, the ring gear off. Take a, take a file and just run it across. Make sure there's no burrs on there. Lock tight the ring gear bolts when you put it in. Measure your backlash carefully. You're essentially trying to get the rear end to be tight enough that there's not gonna be any deflection under load, but also loose enough that there's enough room for oil to still form a protectional layer inside. It's a balancing act, but it does work. And with a little bit of patience, even I was able to do it. Finally putting the Detroit locker back into the AAM. Now the AAM is gonna be quite a bit easier to do the axle work on than the Dana 60. You see the AAM, it has these ring adjusters, just like the 14 volt uh, full floater. So you set your preload using this adjustable ring inside. If you have not seen my video on the 14 volt rig gear, I'm gonna put it up in the corner so you guys can go watch that. It has more detail. Uh, but essentially, replace the carrier with the new locker. Drop this guy in, I've got new races and new bearings. The things to pay attention to, you have to match the bearing, the cap, to the uh, side that it was on. So make sure that you orient it and put it next to uh, the side that it was on. I also use these little markers as I rotated the uh, adjusting ring out. Every revolution, I'd mark it down. So hopefully, I should be able to get the same bearing preload rather easily by going back to what I had before. Uh, it's difficult to truly check uh, bearing preload with these guys, but what I can do is get it back in and check my backlash and that will give me a good idea. But uh, yeah, do that and get the axles in, fill it with this fluid and throw a cover on it and this thing will be close to ready to go underneath. I just had my buddy come by and look at my pattern. He, he's a guru. He's another one of those guys who has forgotten more about stuff than, than I will ever know. So he gave me the blessing, said that my backlash is fine and my pattern looks good. So let me show you guys how we check those two things. I've done this in another video, but we might as well do it while we're in here. This is my dial indicator that is measuring off of the ring gear how much slack I have between the ring gear and the pinion. So if you come in here, you'll see how much that's moving. So we are, let me zero it out, that's zero. And then as I move it, you see I'm getting about seven thousandths, eight thousandths. That is my backlash. The backlash tells me how, how tight it is essentially. And if you come in here, Ryder, and show, show them the pattern on here, you can kind of see the pattern. What you're looking for is that little crescent moon. You see where the smear is? You're just looking for position of the pinion gear engaging with the ring gear. Mine is good. It's time to button this guy back up. I'm stoked. This one's done. The AAM is in and done. And I hit it with its first pass of steel it. Then I'm going to be moving on to do this guy. I wish I'd never taken this apart. I was convinced that this had... 373 gears and I knew this had 410s so I ordered 373 Dana 60 gears and pulled the whole assembly out carrier and uh, ring and pinion 
and got down to the plain case. And then I discovered that this is actually 410. So I could have left everything in place, just popped out the carrier and replaced it with the e-locker and put everything back together. Yeah, I like to make things harder than they need to be. Idiot. Stupid, you're so stupid. Yeah, we'll deal with it. At least I get to learn how to do a Dana 60 and at least have some uh, confidence that I have an idea of what I'm doing on setting up both types of gears now. So that's a win. Always look at the bright side. It's not all bolting new parts onto an old truck. There's a lot of prep and tear down that has to happen so that you can rebuild it up. Part of my objective with this build is, is creating a truck, a family hauler, a big wagon that my family wants to be in. And having it be relatively quiet and comfortable is high on my list. Not so high that I didn't put giant mud tires and a diesel in it, but I am going to go the extra mile when it comes to prepping the frame and the body. And that's what I've been doing, and it is a brutal. I basically hit the entire underside with a wire wheel off the angle grinder to just clear all the dirt, mud, grease, crap, old paint off of anything. I want to get down to as close to bare metal as I can so I can come in here and spray it with the lizard skin and not my, hit my head multiple times while I'm doing it. It's been ugly. I've made a significant amount of progress and, and I'm happy with where it is going, but unfortunately I still have quite a bit to go. I think I got a little dirt on my nose. Right there. Did I get it? Oh, gnarly. But yeah, starting to get everything down to bare. Whew. I'm going to spray this with some lizard skin, so I just want to get it as clean as I can. There's a, there is no rust. I mean, I got to say, this is pristine. It's just got 30 years of grime. Hey. Proverbs 14, 23. Hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. So it's time for me to stop talking, start welding and grinding and cleaning and building. Hoping to get the underside all wire wheeled down, get the frame all dialed in, get that Dana 60 built. And uh, yeah, I should be able to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. If you have not seen all my other episodes of the Square Body Burb Build, I'm going to link it in a playlist that you guys can go check out. And uh, I've also got some Moab videos that uh, you guys may not have seen from my last trip to Moab. It's up there. Make sure to hit my uh, subscribe button, check out my Patreon, and we'll be back at you next week.